This is how I draw eyes. I'll be explaining how to draw from any angle, how to draw different expressions and go in depth on how to add variety to your eyes. In the end, I'll show my coloring and animation process too. This tutorial isn't just for the anime style, but it works on different styles too. So, let me start with a groundbreaking question. What is the eye? Well, the eye is the soul to the- It's the eye. It's the window to the soul. Okay, let's start with the breakdown of the eye structure. First, we got the eyelid, then we got the upper eye thing, the eyelash, the pupil, and the iris, which I like to call the eye nucleus, because I don't know the term for both of them combined. Then we got the tear duct, the sclera, the lower lid, the aeosal, and the eye bag. Rule number one, not everyone's eye features are the same. A common misconception is that everyone's eye looks like this. Well, no. Some look like this or this. But what's the difference between them? To draw eyes, you first have to understand that different eyelids exist. Let's practice by identifying the different eyelids. So, this person has monolids, meaning that there is no crease above the upper eye thing. On the other hand, this person has parallel eyelids, and this person has big eyelids. Every eyelid type is beautiful, so don't forget to consider eyelids the next time you draw someone because they might end up looking completely different from what they actually look like. The next feature to look out for is the aegocell and the eye bag. Remember, these two things are different. The aegocell is the puffy thing right below the eye, and the eye bag is the skin below it. A mistake people sometimes do is miss out one of these or add it unnecessarily. An example we could use is Victor from Arcane. So, let's try to draw his eyes in the incorrect way first, then correct them later on. So this is the result. If you choose the wrong eye features, not only are you ignorant, but you'd make the character look unrecognizable. Okay, number two, the shape of the eye. This part heavily relies on the upper and lower eye thing I mentioned a while ago. Quick question, did you know the main contributor to having same face syndrome actually comes with the eye shape? If you keep drawing the same eye shape over and over again, all your drawings will look the same. I have same face syndrome. Okay, so confession, I'm doing this tutorial to fix my own problem and yours. So technically, I'm hitting two stones with one bullet. So let's start. Here's a tip if you want to draw two eyes without making one look completely different, I suggest drawing them at the same time. For the most commonly drawn eye shape, get a big brush and draw horizontal parentheses. It's up to you if you want to add eyelashes, but in my style, my eyelashes are literal dots. Now draw a line down the center to mark your pupils. Draw the lower lid, which is usually just a straight line, the eyelid, and the aegocell. Then close off the sclera with a little line connected to the top lid. Here's the trick with the simplistic pupils we drew. Once they're centered, you can get a bigger circle brush and turn it into your pupils. I don't like having my pupils be too rounded, so I use angles instead. If you want to move its direction, you can now just select the two circles and just move it. That's basically it. Now for the important part, the different eye shapes. To manipulate the shapes, you can draw the upper line in different directions. You could make it point up or down, or even change the lower lid to curve downwards. To draw eyes, don't use a brush too thin or you'll get lost. Step 3. Different Expressions Who's that Pokemon? Eyebrows and wrinkles. To draw expressions, don't forget these features. If the character is mad, the eyebrows are closer to the eyes. If they're sad, it's further and confused, a little bit of both. Pupil size also affects the emotion. If you want to convey shock, anger, or insanity, make the eye nucleus smaller. To make the eyes look angrier, add wrinkles. So let's play guess that emotion with just the eyes. What's this one? Sadness, correct. This one. Happiness, correct. This one, fear. Now, what expression is this? This is the expression I give when I see that there's a wheel on my tablet, or the reaction to distraction. Speaking of tablet, this video is sponsored. Thank you, Gaumon, for sending me the PD156 Pro. Let's unbox this thing. It comes with a brown leather tablet case, which is really cool, and a neat tablet stand. Then the manual and the glove, and its lightweight pen. It also comes with a cute pen stand with nibs inside. After reading the manual, we finally open the tablet. 
I use this tablet to make the OC animation with Pochi, and it's great. The pros and cons are listed in the description. Back to the eyes. So, step number four. We got different perspectives and angles. Ever wanted to make your eye look in a certain direction and said, that doesn't look right. For perspective, there comes the tricky part. Let's start with the y-axis first. To make an eye look like it's in perspective from above or below, what should you use as a guide? A. The hair position. B. The skin tone. C. The eye pack. Well, you're wrong. It's D. The ear position. You can practically draw from the same head base as long as you change the ear position. If the eyes look down, the ears go up. If the eyes are up, the ears go down. For the eye shape, the eyelid is pointed upwards, with the lower eyelid also pointing upwards or is straight. When the eye is facing downwards, both the upper and lower eyelids are usually pointed downwards. Okay, next for the x-axis, I'm going to need you to try this exercise with paper. So, get a small paper and fold it in half. Use it as a reference and draw from five different angles. After that, you'll get a grasp of how eye sockets work. Now, with another layer, draw the eyes, trying to follow the perspective of the paper. So next for the bonus, we have the coloring. This is what I usually do for the coloring. I color the sides of the outline of my eye with the color that's close to the skin tone. But then I'd add a dark color for the upper half and the lighter color in the bottom. Now what I do is color pick the skin tone and airbrush it a little bit on the upper of the eye and on the bottom too. Then I get the lighter color and put it on the pupil. Now I add the highlights which is just black and white. Then I add the igusal and the eye pad. Then I'd color the sclera. What I like to do to color pick the sclera is color pick your skin tone and move it to a cooler color. Finally, I put more emphasis on my outline and that's pretty much it. Next, to animate it. This is just made with four frames. So I'll just show you the different stages. What I like to do to animate eyes is just duplicate every layer and use the lasso tool. For the first frame, it'll be the fully opened eye. Then the second frame, I bring the upper eye thing a little bit lower keeps going lower until the final frame, which is actually the downturned version of it. So make sure it points downwards so that it looks like it's closed and that's pretty much all the four frames. Now to animate it, make sure that the closed version has the least amount of time on the timeline. So this is how my timeline looks like and this is how the animation looks like. Here's everything I talked about. We have the breakdown of the eye structure, the shape of the eye, the different expressions, the different perspectives, coloring and animating. And that's pretty much it. Thank you again for watching and thank you again for helping me reach 100k. I really didn't expect this for it to reach this many people. It's crazy to me. So thank you again so much for your support and I hope that I could help you guys improve while also helping myself improve too. Thank you and see you next time.